Lord God, open the ears of our heart that we may hear your word and live our life according to your truth. Amen. For such a short gospel, such a short passage today, we hear some very powerful messages. And so I want to take a minute and, and kind of give you a little bit of a backstory. And then I want to work through these verses with you. So we're told that Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. So let's think for a minute about what we know about the Gospel of Luke, right? We have in the Gospel of Luke many stories that are also in Matthew and Mark. And then, of course, we have some that are unique to Luke. We only find the infancy narratives in Luke. So we hear the very beginning of Jesus and his life in this world. The Gospel of Luke takes us on that journey with Jesus, that journey always moving to Jerusalem, always going towards salvation. So keep that thought in your mind. Luke's gospel is that gospel of the journey to salvation with Jesus. Now we begin this particular passage understanding that Jesus is in this place, this region between Samaria and Galilee. But here's the thing, Samaria and Galilee border one another. There's no place in between. They are together. And yet they are, Jesus and the apostles are in this physical space that is sort of a, a nowhere land. I remember when I would travel with my parents and I loved maps and I would always wait until we would cross the straight state line. I was sure that I would see the line and my dad would call out from the driver's seat, hey, we're in Ohio. And I would look and I didn't see a line. The, the topography, the, the, the vegetation, everything was the same. They had the same trees, the same grass. There was no line. And that's where we're at in the gospel. There's no line. But the people that lived there knew there was a difference, knew there was a separation. And so we find Jesus and the apostles in this place between. In Celtic spirituality, there is this place called a thin place. This belief that there are times, there are moments and places in our lives where the veil between the divine and the human is lifted. Where in that one moment, we stand with the divine. That is where we begin in this passage today. We begin in that moment of humanity and the divine sharing time and space. And we know that the, the lepers recognize Jesus. They call him out by name and they call him master, a term that only the apostles use. And yet these 10 people who are outside of the group, they are outside of Samaria, they are outside of Galilee, they are not welcome anywhere. They recognize Jesus and they immediately ask for that intimate relationship of being present and learning from him. Now, the word leper, it's very intentional, I think, that it's used as leper. We don't know if they have leprosy. In Greek, the word, the root word is lepros, which means scaly and does, does refer to the skin condition. It's a bacterial skin condition. But these are called lepers. And that term had come to mean anyone who was thought to be unclean or unwelcome within the community. I think for me, my brain automatically says, oh, they're leprous. That's, so they, they had leprosy, so they were outside. So nobody wanted to get sick. 
But instead, if we look just at that word, it could mean someone who's not welcome. And they don't ask Jesus to be healed, right? They just say, look at us, recognize us, have mercy on us. And then Jesus gives them a task. This is one of those moments, again, when we have to understand that our relationship with God requires an action on part, our part. Grace is free and grace is fear, freely given, but we have to choose to accept that. And so when Jesus sends them to the priests, he is recognizing that it is the community that has to welcome them back. And in order for that to happen, the priest has to say they are clean. And so he sends them back and they go, we don't know if they waited, if, if there was maybe a little sidebar that Jesus had with them, you know, go and say this, that's not written, right? We just know that they went off. They had full and complete trust in who Jesus was. And they go. And before they make it to the priest, before they are welcomed back into the community, they are healed. Each of them are healed. But only one, only one recognizes the power and the deepness of that healing. And immediately turns to go and thank Jesus. And in doing so, he praises God loudly for all to hear. Do you remember in chapter 2 of Luke? After Mary and Joseph arrive in Bethlehem, who are the first people to hear of Christ's birth? It's the shepherds. The ones outside the ones that probably didn't smell the best when they came in off the fields. And I would imagine people weren't rushing to sit down and have lunch with them, right? They were the first to hear of Christ's birth from the angels. And even though they were afraid, they trusted in God's promise and God's words. And they set out to find the baby. And when they found Jesus and Mary and Joseph, what did they do? They exclaimed praise to God and thanks to God for what they had seen and heard. And in that chapter, we also hear that even as they made their way back to the fields, they continued to praise God and give thanks to God. And so this one leper in chapter 17 of Luke comes back, recognizes that power of God. Thanks, Jesus, for seeing him as a person, as a person who matters, and for welcoming him, giving him the opportunity to come back into the community. And Jesus, ever mindful of what is to come for him and for the apostles, uses that moment as a teaching moment, as a parent would for their children, or as a teacher would use for their students. He uses that moment to draw the attention of the apostles into what is really happening. He's bringing them back into that very thin place, right? He says, weren't there 10 of them? What happened to the other nine? Where are they? Again, this is part of that thread that moves throughout Luke, right? The woman with the 10 coins loses one and rejoices in that one. The hundred sheep and one is lost. And the shepherd goes out and rejoices in finding that one. Now we have the opposite. Only one has recognized the deep healing that has truly taken place. Only one seeks that thin place again. And Jesus says to the apostles, look, look at this one who is a foreigner, who has been our enemy, still Jewish, 
but not worshiping at the temple and therefore outside of the community of Galilee. But Jesus says, this one, this one knows and understands what has happened. This one is a beloved child of God. So when we hear him say, get up and go on your way, Jesus is saying, get up, go into the world knowing in every part of your being that you are beloved. You are loved by God and welcomed into the kingdom and welcomed in the community of God. In the Bible, my study Bible, it says your faith has made you whole. Our translation says, well. But if we use that word of whole, then I think it gives us a better glimpse of what was really happening. Yes, he was physically healed because it was visible to everyone around him. But there was something more, there was something greater. John Shea, who is a Roman Catholic theologian and storyteller, has uh, written several books that follow the lectionary and, and give reflection on that. And he says it is this idea that Christ has given this man a second chance a do-over, if you will, right? He's, he's telling him to go out and be in the community, be in the kingdom, live into your place. For us today, isn't that what we need? A second chance? An understanding of how deeply God loves us. How intimate God wants to be with us in relationship. And I dare say that every day, every day we are given that second chance. We are given another chance to go out into the world. Go out and know that we are beloved. For when Jesus looks at that leper, at all of them, he looks at the whole being. God knows every part of us, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything in between. And God says, I love you. I have created you out of love. And that love is never taken away. So every day we have that second chance to go into the world, who we are, just as we are, knowing that we are beloved, knowing that we have the opportunity to extend God's kingdom to others, to see people. We are commanded to love our neighbors as God loves us, right? What if, what if our second chance is to learn to love how Jesus loved? And what if our second chance every day is to learn to see others, how Jesus sees them, how Jesus sees us, beloved? For that is who we are. Amen.